On today's episode, we break down the truth of the top 10 finishing wide receivers. Was it an outlier? Did they beat up on bad defenses? And a startling, startling Stephon Diggs fall in the second half. See where he ranked. Make sure you subscribe to this channel right now so you don't miss a show. And enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. You didn't like it. I It caught me off guard. What caught me off guard is that you've migrated from your Minnesota gear. You, you're wearing a another baseball what is this sweatshirt. What is this baseball it's, stuff? It's the hometown team. It's my Diamondbacks, Jay. That's his it's Diamondbacks. Baseball. Sports. See, the, the, the difference between you and I, Jason, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and some others – is that I got room to love a lot of things, and you don't have as much room. You, you. My love a, is too big and too strong to be spread no, out and weakened and mm. diluted across all these sports. You don't have enough love. We both have the same amount of love. No. I just pour mine into something, and you're like, you get a little love, and you get a little love, little love. Okay, all That's right. I'm gonna start calling I mean, you little love. Little love. I do, I don't love football. I'm big love. <laughs> <laughs> huh? I, Wasn't that an HBO know, show? Yeah, it was. It was <laughs> with the uh, polygamy. With, yeah, yeah, with the uh, uh, oh, Paxton. Shoot. Yeah, shoot, <laughs> big <Yeah>. love. <laughs> that's that's. Well, that's who All you right, are now, well, Jay. All right. Yeah, I mean, but but the irony of that is that I'm the polygamist in this situation because I like all sports. Like they're ah, all. I'm married to all of them, mm. and you just have one. You're monogamous. With big, big love <laughs> with football <laughs> with football. Uh, yeah. Well, thanks for listening. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, welcome in one and all Judge Giamatti in the house. How you doing? Excellent. That's Thanks good. for asking. That's good. We got Papa Josh. Hello. Still not the League of Record champion. And then uh, Al Borland hiding over there in the corner. That's me. We've got a truth episode for you today. At least I think we do, right? We We're talking do. Truth and there's of quarter, uh, wide receivers. Wide receivers. This is uh, part one of the wide receivers uh, from the 2023 season. And there are some real fascinating things. I, I feel like going through the data, I learned quite a quite a bunch. So I hope uh, you do as well. Jason does put together the uh, some of the numbers back behind these episodes. And he does this next to me in our office. And you know it's going to be a good show when you hear him just out of nowhere. Like he's plugged in. Like he's got ear pods in and stuff and he's working. But then you hear him just go, oh. Or, <laughs> or he'll just be like, what? <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, uh, d d I'll tease here. Stephon Diggs? Stephon Diggs has uh, you the, reacted. Lar the you reacted. largest gap between first half and second half of all time in our data. Even more than that one Adam Thielen year? You remember that, that Thielen? What? <laughs> Me? Yeah, so we'll get into it. Truth of the wide receiver position today. Ten days away from the big game, as they call it. The big game preparation, I think, is what you mean. Which um, the UDK will be available in 10 days for pre-sale, which means immediate access to the Dynasty Pass, where um, our team is hard at work preparing the, you know, the rookie class yes. overviews and our rookie rankings, and um, there's a lot to go over. Yeah, absolutely. And they are they are crushing. We are starting our journey as well with these prospects. So if you want, like, if you play Dynasty, or even if you don't play Dynasty, this is still really good information to get ahead of the crowd in. But I mean, if you love Dynasty, the UDK Plus gives you that. The Dynasty Pass has uh, three versions, so to speak. One that comes out immediately, and then there's a, another update after the combine, and then a, a final update after the NFL draft because so many things change throughout then. But it is jam packed full of content. If you're looking for so, like some fun football research stuff, it's going to be available very soon. And we do have a uh, speaking of the rookie class, there was an overview episode of the Dynasty podcast that Mike and Kyle and uh, Betts were on this week. So you can check that out. The Fantasy Footballers Dynasty podcast is a separate uh, podcast, runs all year long, and focuses on Dynasty. 
the rookie class, dynasty startups, all of that good stuff. I'm sure they're going to tell me I have a perfect team with Raheem Mostert and Mike Evans and Keenan <laughs> Allen. Yeah. Just it's, just it's on its way up. Yeah. I mean, think of the discounts that your team will be getting with their ARP cards. Is there Are there any jobs out there where, like, your peak performance is right before you retire? Like, if you just think of any job out there in the oh, world. that's an interesting. Yes. Where, like, you, like, you're the best of the best of the best at the very, 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 very end. Hmm. Very, very, very and end. And then there, you say goodbye. I, like, is I, there any jobs where you get better progressively every year? Man, I, I feel like it's got to be – It's it would still be in the sports realm. Like, there are some fighters who – you know, they get better and better and better, and then it's over. Really, they just ends. Yeah, I mean, then they just get knocked out. Is that like a te like a teacher? Does a teacher get progressively better at teaching because to a, to they a point pile up the years until, until they get grouchy? Until yeah, yeah. Wait, you say right. you can go too far as a teacher. Yeah, you get old person grouchy, which it happens to the best. Of us. You, yeah, even the even the best teachers will one day just hate kids. You think the producers hate children? Will ah, these children. The producers? You think they'll get better and better and better and better until we fire? I'm waiting. Them? I'm waiting, waiting for, for the, the first better. Yeah. Just one step. Take one step forward, guys. <laughs> if we fire them when we think they've reached their peak, we could kind of yeah. fulfill this prophecy. I'll That's, make a note. All right. Some well, you're not going to have to cuz they will <laughs> refuse to step forward and progress. <laughs> right, guys. Uh, well, Al Borland says bad news. I'm at my peak right now. Oh, yeah, that is bad news. Okay, well, <laughs> we'll bad talk. news for you. We'll talk to you later. Um, you can find the show on X at the FF Ballers. Follow me at Andy Holloway at Jason FFL. You can find Jason there, and Mike is at FF Hitman. You can watch the show on YouTube. YouTube.com/slash The Fantasy Footballers. Subscribe. Click the bell over there. And subscribe wherever you're listening to podcasts or click that follow button. They want it to be follow now. Really? It's it's follow on Spotify and it's follow on Apple. You mm. Subscribing, that is old. Yeah. That is it's follow. Uh, it's old magazine okay. stuff. This is, right. Unless you're on YouTube. So then it's totally then it's, Yeah, you're right. You're right. Uncle Cracker is stoked. This You'll, is where we're supposed to know the reference. Yeah, right? It's fine. This That joke's not for you. <laughs> that joke's for somebody else. You're going to get like 10 YouTube comments. <laughs> I hate it when you do this. All right, quick question of the day. Before we turn the page into uh, some NFL news and then the top 10 wide receivers, the truth of that position, there was a player we kind of didn't discuss at running back because he didn't show up in the first two, ep uh, first two episodes of The Truth. Uh, it was a... Uh, not the year that he had in 2022, but I want to bring it up here as our quick question of the day. Nor the year he had before that or before that. It's Josh Jacobs. Ooh. What is the truth about Josh Jacobs, his 2023 season? Uh, he basically produced half the fantasy football point output that he did in his record-breaking 2022 year. He did miss time right he missed the final four weeks yep. correct uh I, I think it, during that absence because it was every week it was like josh jacobs might play this week but it started to yeah, feel yeah he was he was like day to day for a month it started to feel more like josh jacobs might want to go into the off season where he's a free agent healthy yes but this was uh a player that held out eventually got into camp what's your thoughts on uh the season for Fat Thor. So the, the season was brutal. I think that the truth is that he 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 is more of the player of those, like his first three years, and that 2022 was a was just magic where it happens. Sometimes a player hits a true heater and everything meshes. Whatever the play calling was, the offensive line, everything was just the the mojo was at maximum. That so, I don't think he. I don't think it's done for Josh Jacobs, but you know, point five seven fantasy points per opportunity. That's the lowest of his career, and for last year, that's forty seventh of fifty qualifying running backs, also known as just slightly better than Javante Madison and AJ Dillon. I mean, like when you throw those names out, talking about last year, people want to vomit, and that's kind of what we felt from Josh Jacobs' year. So, I think he's still has some left in the tank but the 
when 2022 happened and you were like, this is it, Josh Jacobs has ascended and become this running back, I think the truth is just he's a very good running back, but but maybe that elite season, was that was the top. I, I'd take a more positive view on mm. J- Josh Jacobs. From, from last year? From this past year, yeah, I okay. take a view. Here, here's my my encouraging case for Josh Jacobs. You went through a year where you were late to camp. Your head coach got fired. You had a different quarterback. You had a different commitment to the run. You had a different production on the offensive line. Obviously, the efficiency numbers stand alone are terrible. However, when you got a new head coach who they now hired, right? Antonio Pierce is their full time head coach. Correct. Loves Josh Jacobs. The team loves him. Jacobs wants to be back for this coach. His opportunity pace over the final five full games where he was healthy was uh, almost 400 opportunities and 350 carries. But how was he doing in those? He finished his RB 10, 2, 20, 35, and 7. Okay. So his output what in, were in, in those – so those are the Pierce games? Those were the, the Pierce games from – well, that was week 8 through 12. I don't remember the week he took over. Okay. But this was when they, they showed a renewed commitment to the run. And, um, you know, the reception totals weren't where they were last year. That helped them a lot. I just I, I do wonder if he goes back. I'd be very worried about him departing, but if he went back to Las Vegas with Antonio Pierce, I think he would be somebody I'd be looking to add as a value running back. Do you, the do you not have concerns for the the breakout of Zamir White over the final month? That's where I'm not really I, because the money that they'd have to pay him to bring him back would be a commitment. But a commitment to him, but still would be. I mean, how do I don't know how you put the genie back after Zamir White comes in those last four games and is, I mean, like he was tremendous for it, them. It feels like if they if they believe what you're saying, like that if if in the locker room the Zamir White production translated the way it is to you, then they won't bring Jacobs back, right? Why would you do that? You're not going to pay a bunch of money if you believe in Zamir White. Just use him as your well, running back. Jacobs and not may not that. he may not find. <laughs> a very open, uh, open and welcome market for him. So he could go back to the Raiders at just a discount. Oh, yeah. He's I, taking money. I, I think 25 years old. He's going to take the money, and I'm, I'm guessing it will be with the Raiders. The way that Antonio Pierce has discussed these two, and this is after Zamir White's good performances, he was asked about – he was flat out asked the question of, like, does Zamir's – incredible production while Josh Jacobs has been out turn this into more of a committee and he basically said we're so thankful for what he's done but like Josh Jacobs is our dude so if that's the way it was in the locker room then amidst that happening if they sign and bring back Josh Jacobs I do think he's going to be a value I, I think there's gonna be a lot of people scared a lot of people that don't want him because of the efficiency numbers but at the same time when he went down to injury he was actually the running back 11 on the season to that point he only had six touchdowns on the season. The you know the previous couple of years was twelve nine. So I I I think he'll be a value next year. I think, and I, and I can even go higher. <laughs> I can go higher. I think he'll be a super the, value. He, I was I was you know he could enjoying that he could be, but it would be a, a matter of he would he'd have to get that volume. I feel like yeah he he would and and but that's been kind of. Um, You'd love to see the targets go back up. I mean, the previous two years, 64 targets, 53 receptions. Obviously missed a little bit of time. Maybe they would have been pretty close. But does Brooks believe in him? That's what matters for next year. Yeah. Because Brooks called the uh, 2022 breakout, which the reason that was such a valuable pick is because people doubted him. Like, going into 2022, it was like, you know, Josh Jacobs, ho-hum, never over 200 fantasy points. <laughs> so, Brooks, Jacobs resigns with the Raiders. Is he good? Oh, he's good. All right. Oh, okay. Well, All, right. Case closed. Okay. All right. Science. Do you, do you guys remember week two? Because I did. I did not remember this. That. Yeah. He, he finished the 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 game seventy three percent of the snaps. So he played. He finished the game with nine carries for negative two yards. Oh yeah. On the ground, he he had fifty receiving yards. So it was it was not a collapse for fantasy. But that, that game that's, by that's funny. That game by itself accounted for point two of his yards per carry on the year. That it, it it dropped it, um, but he's so young. He's still young, sure, um, and versatile. So we'll see. Uh, some NFL news. I'm going to just breeze through this uh, real quick. No need for the drop. We'll just jump in. But head coaches, we've got new ones. And we have. Uh, this is a Mike McDonald thing. <laughs> yeah, dude. 
Mike uh, McDonald. I don't know if I'll, I. He's the I, Ravens DC, right? And he, Stewart, he was. He Stewart. was. Was. And now the six year deal with Seattle to become their new head coach. And I can't hear the name Michael McDonald without thinking of the singer. And that will just be, it'll be an enjoyable thing for that, you. That happens inside mm -hmm. my brain every time. So a new head coach for Seattle? Because. Because uh, Ben Johnson was not going to be their head coach, nor was he going to be the head coach of the Washington Commanders. He goes back to Detroit, Smart. as does. Bobby Slowick, the offensive coordinator for the this Texans. This is such good news for it's fantasy It's so helpful football. for us. Yes. We will be smarter because we will know what to expect for these two teams. And Ben Johnson, look, I have thought a lot about this. I, I think he made the right call on many levels. On one level, I just respect anybody that is, you know, they're, they're obviously the underpinnings of the NFL coaching world is a progression. Like, you just want sure. to progress, 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 and then get your opportunity to be a head coach. And he may not get that opportunity by passing here, right? Obviously, if they struggle next year, the window could close for him. However, the jobs this year, I think they're better next year. I don't think that going – I know Washington has high draft capital. But if you take that one nuanced piece out of the equation, like, it's a, that's a tough franchise to win with. Okay, they've sure, gone through yeah. a lot of coaches. I know they have a new ownership, whatever. It, next year could be, can, you know, you, we're always going to be looking at Kansas City and whether Andy Reid leaves. Dallas is going to be always a one season away from firing their head coach. Dallas could be a, a landing spot for sure. them next year. Uh, there's talk in Philadelphia, you know, if they struggle again, they've already fired and hired all the other coaches except for the head coach. Philadelphia could be on the board next year. Like, there are opportunities that to me seem like, you know what, Ben Johnson, two solid years in, in, in with the Lions if he wants to go get that job. But this is great for Goff. This is great for uh, Amon Ra, Sam Laporta for soft, oh, it's, sophomore uh, it's, slump. I don't think so. It's so fantastic for, for fantasy football. And, and I'm for it. Like the, the leak that came out, uh, whatever it was, a month or, or so, a month or two ago of – you know, there was Ben. We're hearing Ben Johnson wants, I think it was like fifteen million dollars a year. I mean, One hundred and fifty million dollars. It, it was, but, it was but, an amount of money that is like no one's going to pay that, and maybe code, maybe teams around the league said we're not going to pay that. But that's, I mean, that's beautiful for Ben Johnson. It's like okay, either you give me mm -hmm. the you give me generational wealth. And I come and try and be a head coach, or I go back to this team that was one half away from the Super Bowl. That's that, that's and, a good life. And then I'll do it next year. Yeah, and the, yeah, and he more than likely will still be a hot candidate next year. Maybe Jared Goff and company they fall on their faces next year, but that seems seems unlikely. Yeah, and uh, Bobby Slow going back to the Texans is great too. Oh, that one continuity makes me, for a for a young quarterback yes. in that offense. That one makes me even happier because. When you only – like, I believe in Stroud. I think that he would have been good with or without Slowick. But the Detroit Lions offense is – you know, it's 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 already established. There's a there's enough veterans there with Montgomery and Goff. And I think if they lost Johnson, they would have been okay. They would have been fine. But I, I would have been more fearful for the Texans offense with all the youth there when you have a change at coordinator. So that one makes me thrilled. Yeah, and he'll have opportunities if he succeeds again next year as well in the um spoiler alert. He's going to. CJ Stroud's awesome. Yeah. So and then uh let's not bury the reaction everybody really wants. I think eighteen minutes, forty <laughs> seconds into the show, I think yeah, most people have fair. waited for right here, right now. We've got a new offensive coordinator for the Pittsburgh Steelers, and his name is Arthur Smith. What what? The people are happy? <laughs> That's crazy. I'm happy. I'm with the people. The the, the reactions on Twitter are – they've been electric because it is so polarizing and not just everyone dunking on Arthur Smith. I've seen everything from the Steelers will be – like I will be a full fade of every Steelers player. This is going to be a disaster to people who are like, Najee Harris is back, baby. He's going <laughs> to get fed the ball. And – so it's it's funny to see one person here just but the opinions can be so split on them but it it's 
Whatever, it's great for the show. I'm I'm a little surprised Pittsburgh went this direction, but he Arthur Smith did have success in uh, Tennessee as the OC. Arthur Smith had a, had success in Atlanta. What sure. Arthur Smith did not have was the support of fantasy managers because they drafted Bijan and did not turn him into a workhorse. That's why we hate him. Well, he also him. he didn't have the support of the ownership of the team because he drafted Bijan and then didn't use him properly. Sure. No, I, I get that. But my point is they ran the ball well as a team. So well with players that didn't make sense. Who was the uh, Caleb Caleb Huntley? Mm-hmm. Caleb Huntley showed great. I mean, you, you had Tyler Algier. The system is perfect for Pittsburgh. Break the Atlanta rookie record the year prior. So, uh, you know, it was, it was super frustrating, and maybe you're going to see some of that. Thankfully, people aren't madly in love with Najee the way they are with Bijan so we're gonna we're gonna already forgive a committee here but I do think he's going to be very good for their running game and obviously he had Derrick Henry before and he had uh Bijan but he's he's I think a, he's not the worst offensive mind he, he's really not he's just frustrating from a personnel standpoint but I think in Pittsburgh that's going to be just fine I agree, and I think uh, I've already seen the free Jalen Warren tweets, and you know, I think that'll be the popular candidate next year. But I'm gonna, j I'm just gonna say it. Uh oh, I think for the first time in my life, you may oh, you've been on Najee. You might find me on the other side of the Najee argument based on draft position next year. Which, look, you guys may think I'm just a hater, but I only hate him as a player and a person. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah, you no. can't. What? How dare you? Oh, no, Najee. I'm you, just Najee's kidding. Najee's awesome. a great person. Yeah, and um, a good player in the right system and situation. The truth is, is I have not liked where people drafted him, nor what they think his ceiling can be. But when you are put into a system like this, the production he had at the end of the year, yeah, I mean his ADP last year was the RB nine. I'm not signing up for that. That's a uh, cancel the subscription sure. situation for me. But um. All right, we'll take a quick break, and we'll come back with some truth. All right, well, uh, we are we are done talking about head coaching changes, although we will have a coaching changes episode breaking all the implications down well beyond Arthur Smith uh, later on this offseason. Right now it's time for the truth of the wide receiver position. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Well, can we handle the truth of some of these wideouts and what in the world is going to happen with them in the 2024 redraft season? Um, let's talk about some trends. We've been doing this at every position. Looking at trends of the wide receivers since, you know, back in 2018, the value of the wide receiver target has actually gone down over the last few years. The zone defenses you're seeing out there are forcing a bunch of... Banish them. You know... <laughs> Pull a baseball. <laughs> oh, yeah. No more... No more um, your, uh, your defense is working too well. No so more we, defensive shift. We need to change the rules. Yeah. I, I'm still waiting for um, them to just pull a... 10 on defense is all that's allowed. Yeah, Let's pull somebody off. But look, this has resulted in more short area targets for the wide receiver position. 11% of the targets were behind the line of scrimmage. It's the highest since 2018. You'd think that Cliff Kingsbury was in charge of doing that. <laughs> Maybe that's why he's getting a lot of interviews lately is because – It's they, so hot right now. They're just like, man, why throw it forward when you can throw it backwards? Short of the sticks? How about short of the line of scrimmage? Yeah, I mean, this is uh, this is this is true, but it's part of the – you know, anything behind the line of scrimmage is technically a run for the wide receiver position, and you're seeing more wide receivers used in the no. run. Not if it's a forward pass. Yeah, you could still have a forward pass Correct. behind the I'm line I'm sorry, of scrimmage. I meant behind, yes, I meant a lateral. Anything that's backwards, yes, a backwards yes, pass. Of course. Yes. Sorry, not uh, the line of scrimmage, but backward, backwards, backwards in direction. Pass. Um, but there's uh, the more more wide receiver rushing attempts than we've seen in a really long time. More end rounds. Uh, teams are putting more wide receivers in motion. You're seeing more innovative stuff with, I mean, every time you watch Tyreek Hill in the Miami offense. Well, it's the defenses are now more than ever scheming to stop the big play. Like that's that that seems to be at the, the top of uh, the defensive assignment is 
stop the huge plays, which, I mean, it's smart. Obviously, we've seen, you know, saw the scoring and things going down. If you stop the big plays, it's you're more likely to have an accident and have to punt. And, um, yeah, there, Kyle put together a list of the top six teams of percentage of motion at the snap. Miami is ridiculous. 68% of plays. Is yeah, that I mean, right? It's, but it's, it's – you know, very funny. Of so, number one, Miami. Let's see, great offense. The Rams. That's a great offense. Forty mm-hmm. ers Oh, that's that's a great offense. The Green Bay Packers. Well, that's a great offense. Uh, and the Detroit Lions. Well, Baltimore Ravens. Hey, weird, yeah. weird. Why? Well, and, and look at uh, who's dead last in the entire league and who just got fired. Yeah, the Philadelphia, Philadelphia. Eagles. Ten point nine percent of plays, and uh, they just. They just brought in a new offensive coordinator. Followed by the Browns, Cardinals, and Commanders. So huh. let's uh, weird. Let's get some motion going on in there. Um, we did have some very high end fantasy seasons at the tippy top of the position, though. Uh, Kyle took a look at every top twelve wide receiver over the last five years. So that's sixty different wide receivers, and you had four this season that would finish in the top twelve of that group. So you had just some massive performances. In point, in points per game. That's right. I mean, you had elite seasons from CeeDee Lamb, Tyreek Hill, Amon Ra, Keenan Allen. In terms of points per game, obviously Allen missed time later in the season. But you had some wide receivers that were going off and, and leading to uh, championship game appearances and championships. Man, halfway through the season, could you imagine that Tyreek Hill, even missing a game, doesn't finish as the, the number, number one? one? Yeah, CeeDee was so good. Yeah, and um, I really love him. <laughs> Big love. All right, let's dig in because we're going to start with C.D. Lamb. Great games at the wide receiver position. We're categorizing, uh, categorizing 20 plus points. Good games, 12 and a half points. Bus games, fewer than seven and a half. C.D. Lamb came in at number one. He was number two in consistency. First half was number six in consistency. Second half was number one overall. He only busted in 6% of games. He was good in 82%. So, again, good, 82% of the time, 12 and a half or more fantasy points. And 41% of the time, it was great. That, that number's insane. I mean, pretty much from the bye week. They came out of the bye week, and they were like, we're going to just throw you the ball. The offense changed. More than everybody in football because he ended up with 135 receptions. And uh, we'll just let the chips fall with CeeDee Lamb as the centerpiece. Yeah, the the offensive scheme of the Cowboys 100% changed after the bye week. Uh, and they went with a – CeeDee Lamb is the focal point of this. There is the, the narrative. I don't know if we have ever confirmed it, but the talk of CeeDee Lamb over the bye week, go, you know, having a meeting with Coach McCarthy and kind of saying like – get me the ball cuz the while he was still pretty consistent fantasy wise over the the first half you know some of the, the games after the bye week leak into that but the way that the season started for CD Lamb was really hot and cold and like if you had if you drafted Lamb you you remember it like it was not all roses uh, you had week 3 he was the wide receiver 43 against Arizona like that was but that was it was also very strange because the Cardinals won the game and the Cowboys just got shellacked to next week. He's pretty good against New England. And then the, the Cowboys against San Francisco, it's a disaster for CeeDee Lamb. And then the offense changed. The The question for me about CeeDee Lamb for you guys is, was this a true – was this like the level up yeah. for CeeDee Lamb or was this just he's great – He's an elite player, but this was th- this was something special, or we're now putting him at a different uh, level. This is who he is. He is he is one of the you know absolutely one of the five best wide receivers in the in the NFL. He's going to be treated as such. He's going to be used like it. Uh, their offense was great doing this, and he's just unstoppable. I mean, there's certain guys you know like. You know, you're you're never going to go away from Justin Jefferson if you have a coordinator change. And in my opinion, Ceedee Lamb looked unstoppable. You just keep throwing him the ball; it just keeps working. He's 
open. If he's not open, he still catches it. He's just so good. And and from that point, from that bye week forward, he was not he was the number one wide receiver, obviously, but he was a huge gap ahead of number two. You know, he he scored twenty three point nine half PPR points per game during that stretch. The second best was seventeen point four. He was humongously a, a ahead of the field. What I loved about C.D. Lamb and the fact that, look, you keep your head coach, right? That's a big deal. If you wanted to question the the, the variables, they're going to have the same quarterback. They're going to have the same head coach, and it really, really worked, and they move him around. If you watch the games. Yeah, they do. They move him all the time. Like, there is no scheming. Like, of all, like, I guess Tyreek is in that category of, like, you can't really scheme yourself out of having to deal with Tyreek. But C.D. Lamb moves all over the formation. He comes out of the slot. They, 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 you know, put him in the backfield sometimes. Like his, he's just too integral into this offense that I agree with Jason. I think he has fully leveled up. I mean, this was a season of seasons too. Like that 2021 Cooper Cup year. That's the only one that is at that 135. You know, reception total, 12 touchdowns. I mean, that superstar wide receivers are going to have some variability in touchdowns from year to year. So it's not going to shock me if C.D. Lamb has nine next year or eight or, you know, wherever the case may be. But the the volume will always be there. So third and deep receptions, third and intermediate, first and short. Do you have, dynasty-wise, it's been, the for the last couple of years, it's been the big two. It's been Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase. Is C.D. Lamb there, or is it those two guys, then C.D. Lamb, and then we have a third tier? No, he's there for me. Okay. I'm one. comfortable with him there, yeah. All right. Like, I mean, if you just muse for a second. And of like having Jamar Chase and CeeDee Lamb on one dynasty team? You want to, you want to, like, you want to imagine what that'd be like? Why'd you do that, Andy? <laughs> Why'd you walk into that trap? <laughs> yeah. And CeeDee Lamb <laughs> should be on my dynasty team. No, no, he's good. He's where he belongs with the chain. <laughs> you never paid me for talking him into the trade, by the way. Yeah, well, I had my fingers crossed. Um, you know where was I yeah, going yeah. there? Oh, sorry. I was Eat going with one. how you were going to draft those three. That's okay. what I in a in a redraft league. Um, how are how are you going to look at those three players? And like, are you taking Jefferson Chase ahead of Lamb and all of are oh, all three man. of us doing that? Wow, you're redraft. I think I am. I, I think in a redraft, I'm Jefferson Lamb Chase. I would as well, except in a redraft, I might have Tyreek above chase as well yeah no no i agree with that just here in uh you know january 31st sure. yeah. looking at next year yeah, but jefferson still has a quarterback issue that needs to be solved speaking of tyreek hill he was the most consistent wide receiver in all of fantasy football he's number two in fantasy finish his first half of the year he was number one most consistent second half of the year he was number two most consistent um zero bus games zero yeah other than, you know, injury games we don't count. 75% good, 56% great. Like, he won weeks regularly, especially looking from, like, week 5 to 13. I mean, it is it is hard to do what he did. He was very similar to his teammate, Raheem Mostert, who had one of the best seasons, one of the most helpful fantasy seasons we've seen him forever, but ruined <laughs> the only downtime was in the playoffs where he missed week one of the playoffs and then didn't really go his okay, normal yeah. self in the championship round. So, uh, you know, it, it felt like it tailed off at the end, but it really didn't. It was just an injury that he played through and was still good. He he deserves to be, until he retires, he deserves to be at the, the tip top of confidence. Yeah, and obviously at the very top of these lists, you you don't need us to tell you these players were great. But when you have the opportunity to break down the numbers a little bit, see why they were great, you know, he won people fantasy championships in, or got them all the way there, and he was an undefendable player. I mean, just destroys man coverage, destroys zone coverage. Um, he was we, – we watched him all year long and just went like, oh, how's he that open? Yeah, 21 receptions of 20 or more air yards – which is more than any that he had playing with Patrick I mean, Mahomes, and seventy percent of his receptions went for a first down. He's he's the, he's the only player since Randy Moss where you're just like a deep ball is going to work this game every game. 
Yeah. Like you, you would think that you could turn that off. Like you could somehow turn off Tyreek Hill going deep, and it, you can't. I think him and Tua before the game go, okay, okay, okay. What's today? Is today a throw it, you know, vastly underthrow it? Or <laughs> you want me to vastly overthrow it? And then they just do the, And, and they both work. They both work. You just don't throw it to him. Throw it really far away from him in either direction. He'll yeah. slow down or speed up and get the ball. So I think uh, I think we can move on. Number three, mm -hmm. Amon Ross St. Brown. This one's great. This was a player drafted as the wide receiver nine, ends at three. Consistency, three. First half? Three. Second half? Three. Now I mean, that's that, consistency. That's, I mean, amazing. So finishes at three, third most consistent. Doesn't matter how you split the year up. 81% good games, 31% great, 6% bust. 119 receptions for 1,515 yards. You know what? I didn't realize he was this good. Ah, uh, yes. 10 touchdowns, 164 targets. It's perfect. Um, this was a heck of a year, and he has just leveled up every season. Like the chip on his shoulder, when you have a chip on your shoulder, does it get bigger over time or smaller over time? Most people get smaller over time. But his is getting – He continues to add to it. Like, finds another Jordan reason to be upset. Yeah. hundred. Uh, so, he went from 90 receptions to 106 to 119. My favorite part about Amon Ross St. Brown is it, it's it's done in a completely different fashion than Tyreek. But the consistency is there because you know how much of the first read he is in this offense, and you can't really guard what he does. It's, it's different. Tyreek does it with speed. Amon Ra does it with route running and and great hands where it's just the play is coming to you at this exact spot in this exact moment and there's just no way you could stop it. So I, I the I don't I don't have any fears of Amon Ra, you know, finding his way to some coverage that's going to stop him next year. I don't think there's any fear at all. So you you've got to just be And he keeps Ben Johnson. Yeah, yeah he keeps, keeps Ben Johnson and I Really love the splits. You know, like where Jared Goff is a pretty streaky, hot, cold quarterback, depending on if he's on the road or if he's at home. But Amon Ra against top 16 defenses, that was nine games, 16.74 points, 18.1 against bad teams. So, you know, hardly any difference. And then on the home or on the road or at home, it's less than a point difference between those two things. So that those. It's great to see where – I mean, both – well, CD and Tyreek, we've already sung their praises, but they definitely beat the crap out of bad teams where Amon Ra was just, just – Steady. Just steady and, and not not the steady that we had uh, two years ago where it was – it's good. It was steady great. Let me ask you this, though, because it, he finished at three. He's increased every year. He's 24 years old. He's about, um, to, about he, to get paid. He's about to get paid. He's on a consistent offense that you understand, right? But I don't feel like if I asked – I mean, you didn't bring his name up when I brought up the top four wide receivers off the board. And to me, what sticks out with Amon Ra is like, okay, this was a 10-touchdown year. Mm -hmm. He had six the year before. He had five the year before that on similar reception totals. Yeah. Are you waiting for that shoe to drop next year? Is yeah, it th this, is his, this is around his peak. I mean, not that he can't do 10 again. He probably will before the end of his career. But – if you're like, who can go out there and get you 15 touchdowns? That's that's got to be someone with a different archetype. That's a yes. Jefferson. That's a, a CD could do it. Uh, Chase. Yeah, exactly. I don't. I, the the play style and the you know the the slot machine style. It's like Keenan Allen. You don't expect Keenan Allen to go out there and get 15 touchdowns in a season. And um, I I you know I'm gonna probably pencil him in. We're we're gonna be statting guys for the U for the UFC for the UDK. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're gonna be. Chase is doing some, I got. I got doing some work for the UFC, the round. and I, I'm guessing I'll have Amon Ra right around like seven and a half, eight touchdowns. That's my expectation going into a so season. Like a first round wide receiver. Yeah, for okay. sure. Yeah, I would imagine so. Puka Nakua comes in at four. Yes, Puka Nakua comes in at four. Now, he played the whole season, and he started real hot, real fast. So his fantasy stats end up at four, but his consistency was nine. First half, 11. Second half, 13. Um, he's a rookie. 
He did literally more than anybody could expect of a rookie wide receiver ever. 105 receptions, 1,486 yards, six touchdowns, right? Finishes at four with six touchdowns. 24% great, 53% good, 24% bust. So 24% bust is four bust games on the season. It is worth noting that two of those bust games were the Matthew Stafford list games, the, the game that he got hurt in and the next week when he didn't play. So he he was yeah, he, he would have been the consistency score of fifth without those games. Obviously, okay. you still had to make your decision to play, so we yeah. have him in here. That's why he's consistency ranked nine. I don't think I'm going to be the person this offseason. You know, it's January, so we'll see. But I don't think I'm going to be the person just saying, like, like I think I'm going to be the puka person. Oh, good. I don't think I'm going to be the cup person. I don't think there's going to be a lot of cup people. I think there will. Really? I mean, Cooper Cup had a 2021 season that left, you know, <laughs> there's tattoos out there. Forever ago. I, I don't know. I, uh, mean, I, 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 I mean, I just see the narratives will get spun up if there's enough of an ADP gap to say you should just be taking this all pro. That's being drafted two rounds behind Puka, but I, I am a believer that the Puka takeover will be solidified next year. I'm I'm right there with you, and I I don't think there's been a bigger Cooper Cup person than than like this last season. You know, I'll take the L on it, but I was I I was taking Cooper Cup like crazy. Anytime he was anywhere, he would slip in in the first round down to the fourth, the fifth, the sixth. I, I'd be taking him sometimes at the two. Um, I believed in Matthew Stafford supporting an amazing fantasy wide receiver. And, uh, unfortunately the injuries came for Cooper cup, but then also unfortunately for cup Puka took over. And as a true Cooper cup believer, this is Puka's team going forward there. I, I, I mean, I don't have any, that doubt is how, that. that is how I feel. And, and maybe Cooper cup, you know, puts up a Thielen esque, uh, touchdown total. Yeah, you know when when Jefferson was starting to take over, I just think Puka was so impressive. The most receptions by a rookie ever, most receiving yards, most first downs. That's a great comp, Andy. The, the Thielen the, the situation, Jefferson yeah. Thielen. That, that's exactly will be what this is. Productive. Yeah, 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 I agree. But I just think it's time. You know, twenty-two years old, the maturity he showed as a rookie, solidified offense, well, yards per route run, which is a. Like it's a pretty strong statistic in terms of of success and future success. Rookie wide receivers who have surpassed the two and a half yards per route run since 2014: Odo Beckham, AJ Brown, Justin Jefferson, Puka Nakua, and Jamar Chase. I mean, that is <laughs> it's. And then seeing the draft capital for each player is extremely funny because it's like AJ Brown is the one who got disrespected until Puka fell into the fifth round. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I mean, but it, what, what tier does he belong in? Does he? Are you looking at Puka in the future? Or are you looking at AJ Brown with a new offensive coordinator? And how do you make a decision between well, those like guys? Like dynasty, or just he, even next, just, no, redraft, just, just redraft. redraft. Next, I mean, next year, right now, if you had to, if you not knowing anything that we don't know from now, Amon Ra, Puka, and AJ Brown, put put them in the order that you will draft them. Oh my goodness. Um. Like, do you feel more con – I mean – It's probably still Puka at the back of the list of those three for me. The thing about Puka – But that's – I mean, that's, is that's you off do, the top of the head. Get, that's hard. You get more explosive plays from Puka. Yeah. Deep. Yeah. I, well, A.J. Brown – Oh, I, I, meant, I meant relative to Amon Ross. So oh, yeah. I, sure, sure. But that that's going to be a, um, a very interesting – I mean, from nowhere. Undrafted. So, uh, wild. And and how much Puka talk will there be in relation to this large group of wide receivers coming out in the rookie class? And expectations for, oh, oh, you can get, you can get this? <laughs> you can't. Stop. But can, but you no, can. No, there will be, the, uh, yeah, the articles, the next Puka. We'll probably have one. I mean, the, you, well, you had the, <laughs> there will be. Because we got to find him. We yeah. Find the next Puka. I mean, that is, uh, that's wild. All right. Quick break back with some more names. Well, from the youngest to the oldest in this list, Mike Evans. Mike Evans at five. 
the wide receiver 30 off the board for fantasy players. Consist consistency rank of seven, first half 13, second half eight. He went uh, ho hum, 79 for 1255 and 13. He was awesome. Uh, he was Andy's my guy this year. And where you drafted him in the seventh round is the wide receiver 30. You made the playoffs. He and stole. You know, and and you got to your championship game with with Mike Evans. He was fantastic, and this was the you know we had talked about it early in the off season or late in the off season last year, and now early in this off season about how the kind of similar to the Seahawks who had DK Metcalf who was just great, but everyone was worried about the wide the quarterback situation, and then he was awesome first year with Geno. That's what happened with Mike Evans. Now we don't know going forward where he's going to play and who his quarterback is going to be because right now both uh, Mike Evans and Baker Mayfield are not under contract. 29% great, 59% good, 24% bust. Simple question for you. Does Mike Evans get drafted inside the top 15 receivers next year? Because I don't think he will. I don't I would, think so. I would say no. You know, he went at wide receiver 30. Obviously, he proved all of the haters wrong. But with the Age mixed with not knowing this contract situation. Maybe. I mean, if, if it's a re-roll. If it's a re-roll, maybe he gets maybe inside he the top, top 15. Yeah. yeah. He's the fifth 30-year-old wide receiver, 30-plus, 30 uh, to finish in the top five since 2008. And I'm going to tell you who the other four are for the fun of it. But Devontae Adams in 2022, Antonio Brown in 2018, Jordy Nelson in 2016, and Brandon Marshall. So, very good players. Uh, it, it was just a, a really special year for Baker and Evans in that combo. Um, man, all right. You're going to be surprised at this one because he's finished between wide receiver 18 and 22, four straight years, and he had a year that finished at wide receiver six somehow, the hope of Terry McLaurin managers everywhere, DJ Moore. DJ Moore did it, number six. Yeah, week five helped. <laughs> Honestly, week week five was two games. DJ Moore's fantasy finish only will serve to confuse people more <laughs> next year because he was thirteenth in consistency, but nineteenth in each half. Tons, uh, you know, twenty four percent bust games, forty one percent good games, twenty four percent great. Like you said, that oh, was it week five when he went. Yeah, week five. So just to to illustrate this, our metric for whether a wide receiver had a great game uh, you know you're, you're wondering like what's what's a good game a good game is over 20 points and he had he had two of those in week five right so yeah I mean that's that that's conflating this that's why the first half wide receiver 19 the second half wide receiver 19 when it comes to the consistency metric and the the truth score it was better with Justin Fields though I will say that he had some of his down games without him. DJ Moore will be well, he'll be tough to talk me into next year. Cause I think the likelihood, I mean, I don't know if you guys are agreeing with me, but I think I think it's gonna be Caleb Williams. Okay. And I think they'll add another wide receiver for sure. And I don't know if it'll be what is it, pick eight or nine that they have and they you got ro you know they be Rome. Yeah. Rome. Um Adunze. <laughs> if you add a stud wide receiver and a new quarterback we might just want to remember this season for DJ Moore and maybe not. Well, this is lean on him. It's it, it's inconsistent, but this is. It, we'll see where he gets drafted, but a wide receiver taken in the fifth who gave you th those types of spike weeks throughout the season. I mean, this is this is why you assemble a whole team. Everything's not on DJ Moore. DJ Moore will go he, higher than Mike Evans. That yes is yeah that's probably accurate. But you but yes it'll be interesting to see. He's a I think he's still a solid piece of the puzzle of crafting an entire fantasy football roster. But with Caleb Williams, if that's what happens, then that is, that'll be really, really difficult. I, I will downgrade. I know yeah, that you, you can't not, I, I know that Justin Fields has not been a prolific, great world-class passer. You know, his, his value comes from his legs, but I will still downgrade DJ Moore. Should they draft Caleb Williams or any quarterback in, in replacement um, because you just fields. don't, you just don't believe in like rookie quarterbacks like CJ Stroud. CJ Stroud right? is the like, outlier, and so <laughs> he's the inlier. 
there's there's two of them. There's two quarterbacks. Herbert, Are you gonna bring up Herbert? Herbert, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, how did you know the name? How did you know who I was gonna talk about? <laughs> with all the hundreds of rookie quarterbacks I could have gone with. I don't I will say this. Uh, you're right. He's still an outlier, technically. But that's I like tight windows here when we analyze the quarterback position. The the NFL has changed tremendously. You know, the the, the way that rookie quarterbacks are being trusted to become prolific passers, to be allowed to do that stuff, that was just not a permissible opportunity for them uh, other than the last five, six years. Did someone tell Carolina they were allowed to do it? Look, they might not be good. I'm not saying they're all good. <laughs> I think that that's Jason's point. Yeah, it. but if you if, – you Here's gotta, my point. You have to be scared. If you believe in a rookie passer – I am not. I don't know if you believe in Caleb Williams. We'll talk about that a lot over the next six months. If you believe in a rookie passer – it is possible for them to come out and dominate. Possible. Possible. Now, for Chicago, impossible because they never had anybody throw over for over like 4,000 yards ever, right? I, I think they have no 4,000-yard passers ever. In fact, so there's something wild I'm almost like that, positive. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, even just looking at the last five years and only first-round draft picks, you know, Kyler didn't do anything for wide receivers his rookie year. Daniel Jones, uh, Tua, Herbert did, Joe Burrow – I don't remember Joe Burrow's it rookie season. Not, it, I mean, he it wasn't special. great. Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, Trey Lance. Like, all, the, the, even just in the short window, it's it's a bad hit rate to bet on a rookie Yeah, but quarterback. what about the the good ones, though, right? The good quarterbacks did produce. Well, I mean. There just weren't that many good ones. Just Is Caleb Williams good? That is what I'm asking. That's my no, point. No, I need you to tell is me. Is Trevor Lawrence good? No. But my point is like Kyler, Trevor Lawrence, Baker. What or, Ky no, Ky you're telling Burrow, me Kyler didn't, didn't do anything as a rookie? As far as supporting a wide receiver, that's the context is Did not Kyler whether they have were good. Hopkins as a rookie. No, I'll look that. I don't think his so. first season. I don't, did we? Because if he so. did, then he has supported him. I don't think so. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I, we'll just have to stack up the Strouds and the Herberts until we can get you on board. Okay. Uh, number seven, AJ Brown, and we're gonna. We're going to talk about him and Devontae Smith together. Uh, Kyler did not have, have Hopkins as a rookie. That was his sophomore year? Yes. So who do you even have? I'm on it. Larry? Yeah. Probably had Larry. Yeah, Larry would, would have been there. All right. Um, 7 and 20, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith. Very simple question here. Are they both – were they both disappointing? A.J. Brown was the wide receiver 5 off the board, finished at 7. Devontae Smith was the wide receiver 14 off the board, finished at 20. They both finished well below their finish in consistency. So Smith was 12. Oh, I'm sorry. So he was. Uh, he actually finished above his fantasy finish. 12th in consistency for Devontae Smith, finished at 20. A.J. Brown was 10th in consistency. I would say, the, like, I think Smith was more disappointing uh, of the two of them when everything is factored in. A.J. Brown is is truly mysterious of finishing the year with the numbers. He had 106, almost 1,500 yards and seven touchdowns. But over the first half of the season in our metric, he was consistency ranked number four, and that plummeted to 40. So, Jay, you're telling me Stephon Diggs f fell more than that? Just you wait, All brother. Right. That's, Just, that, that's, that's a good tease. Because that's exciting. Because that's a gap. But that's that's the what? <laughs> what happened? Like that's that's the, the what that the you can't. It's hard to even formulate it. Of what happened to the Philadelphia Eagles? What like was Jalen Hurts that hurt? Did defenses figure something out against AJ Brown? Was AJ Brown banged up? Was he look? Football happened to the Eagles this year. That's exactly what happened to them. Yeah, but you man. don't. You everybody always thinks the same thing will always happen forever, and it did for the first ten games. But that's what I mean. Up and until the bye sudden, week, up until the football bye week, happened. AJ Brown was well. He set, was an incredible pick. Didn't he set the record for uh, consecutive you know, one hundred thirty yard games or something? Yeah, yeah, one hundred and twenty. It must yeah. have been one hundred and twenty five yards. He did it in six games in a row. He was a monster. His and then pace vanished. before the bye week, his pace before the bye week was 1,900 yards and 11 touchdowns. His pace yeah, he was up after there with the Tyree. bye week was 958 if, yards, 1,000 fewer yards on a season. <laughs> they were both exactly 50% good games. They were both exactly 19% great games. And then the bust was the difference. You know, A.J. Brown, 19%. Yep. Devontae Smith, 31%. So 
I wouldn't really go as far as to say disappointment for A.J. Brown, but when you're the consistency level of 40 in the second half, you didn't win the championship with A.J. Brown. Well, A.J. Brown is disappointing on the level of you ha- You go into week 10, they're by week, and you feel locked in with what you have with A.J. Brown because he's he did it for essentially nine straight weeks, and you're not making – appropriate moves for your fantasy football team because for him to disappear to, to, at what point in this run are you like oh well maybe something's wrong here with aj brown weak never we yeah no <laughs> because because by the time you start thinking that he finishes 14th against san francisco yeah, and, and 22nd against dallas and, and everything's like, okay we're back and then he just just crashes and burns so that is it as great as it was that's a it's a devastating finish i do have a really interesting stat for you guys over the last two years, when Brown and Smith played together, okay, twenty four percent of the time, both of them hit thirteen plus fantasy points. Forty five percent of the time, both hit ten plus. Forty eight percent of the time, one scored less than seven. So you have like fifty percent chance that they both end up pretty good, like fine, right. ten plus. Or a fifty percent chance that one of them ends up below seven fantasy points. But also, so was it twenty four percent? You said twenty four percent of the time one they're four both games. Good. One in four, you'll get both of them to hit. Yeah, I don't like those odds. But we do have a new offensive coordinator coming yep. in next year. Fair. Um, you've been vigorously jotting numbers down. Was this well, uh, quarterback related? It, I, it was. It was. You circling to, back? Yeah, just looking at AJ Brown specifically and and how those splits between the first half and the second half. The thing that really stood out to me is on the first half of the year, he caught seventy three percent of his passes. That is a really good number. The yes. second half of the year, he caught fifty nine percent of his passes. Now, sadly, fifty nine percent is closer to kind of his career average he's been a downfield guy I think his first year with Philly was 60 percent so I don't know if that means that maybe the first half of the year was if if both halves were a little bit outlier because I think that that's the truth I I, I don't think that he's a little ever too gonna, much a little too little he's not going to ever be that first half where he has 2,000 yards and in 50 touchdowns he's not going to be the second half where he can't crack a thousand yards so it's going to be in between, but if I had to lean which one was the larger outlier, it seems like the first half where you're connecting on 73% of your uh, of your passes is the outlier for the type of passes A.J. Brown usually receives. And for what it's worth in that span, Jalen Hurts was a 69% completion percentage passer, and he dropped to a 61% in the second half of the year. Yeah. So like he struggled not just to A.J. Brown, but all the way across the board uh, in the collapse. So um, – at eight is Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen was, he's 31.8 years old. He's a fourth round draft pick with a consistency rank of five. First half was eight, second half was five. He missed the end of the year, which was unfortunate because you relied on him. And, and let's be honest, if I had him, Mike obviously wouldn't be champion. It's very possible. But I didn't have him. Mm-hmm. Zero bust games for Keenan Allen, 31% great which is a crazy good number for a guy his age yeah. with the archetype that he is. And then 46% good. The, the, three the, times as the overall number one wide receiver on the week. That just seems impossible for a 31-year-old, almost 32-year-old slot receiver to be to have that kind of weak winning performance. See, that's called peaking, Al. <laughs> you can peak like Keenan Allen peaks. We All still right? think you're going to get better. We really do. We believe that you could take the Keenan Allen career arc. But right now... It's going to be a while. <laughs> you're not there. Yeah, no, you're you've, not. You've been a huge help, but oh, you're not man. quite oh, Keenan oh. Allen. You're a, you're a real Quentin? <laughs> that is that is insulting, even for this show. Yeah. To call someone on our staff. Yeah, Quentin, is that the like, worst thing we've ever said to anybody? I, it might be. I think so. And we, and we named Brooks Paul Giamatti. <laughs> But calling him Quentin? Huge potential. Huge potential. <laughs> Quentin while you're ahead. Oh. <laughs> okay. Keenan, Keenan Allen. He's great. Keenan Allen. Um, or he, was, he was great last year. Is he going to be great again? You know, it wore down. I mean, you didn't have Keenan Allen help you past week 12. So, final six weeks of the year, either injured or underperforming compared to what you were expecting. Lost his quarterback. Lost Mike Williams. Lost Josh Palmer. Huge didn't do much. Um 
Is he a go-to receiver next year? Yeah, Keenan Allen should be a go-to receiver next year. Right is, now, is Quentin Johnston still on that team? Quentin Johnston will and still yeah. be on the team. Yes, um, and I uh, personally, I expect. I think they've got the number seven pick overall, given the age of Keenan Allen, the situation with Huge and and Mike Williams. I would, I think, I would be surprised at this point if they don't take one of the great rookie wide receivers. Even though they just did, even though they oh, they spent a first rounder. I think I don't know. I if think they they're going to go back to back. I, I don't know if they can't. I mean, you know, T TBD, we don't know who they're going to draft. But my point is, if they bring in a really top-end, top-10 NFL rookie wide receiver, I still believe as a rookie you're going to have well, Keenan let, Allen as the primary first three. Let, let me give you a different name instead because I think I think, uh, I think Brock Bowers is the name. A lot oh, of, sure. A lot he, of people yeah. are associating with the Chargers. So you bring in a uh, pass-catching tight end. Wait, where where are they drafting? I was five. saying seven. Five? So they could get I've – seen, I've seen Bowers mock to them plenty of times. Yeah. Uh, they, they don't really have a tight end. Gerald Everett is not under contract, so, so he's kind of aged out. Yeah, I mean, and that'd be, you know, possession type of situation there. But, um, you know, the shoe's going to drop on Keenan at some point. But if either of you don't believe it is, I would like you to please trade for him because I have him in Dynasty, and I am willing to give him up for – I mean, Jason, Jalen Waddle. I know you want to get rid of him. Yeah, no, no thank you. I I think we got well, – I think we got one more. One year? more you you want to push it? Would you be uh, happier with Keenan Allen or Mike Evans on your roster next year? Mike Evans had the higher fantasy finish. Keenan Allen was more consistent. I, I would rather have Keenan Allen. Keenan, yeah. My, Mike Evans had 13 touchdowns. Oh, this, that's that's like a low for him. This year? No, I mean, he has several times had double-digit touchdowns, but... Uh, so you'd go Keenan? Yeah. What's if I have eight? to bet whether Baker is back or Baker is pumpkin, I would put my dollar bill towards pumpkin. Now, he is... Uh, Keenan's about a year and a quarter older than Evans. So it's a fun discussion to figure out. I mean, I think it's what do you need on your roster when you're drafting those guys, too? Because Keenan's probably going to catch a lot more passes. Yeah, and and usually where those guys are going to go in ADP, they're not going to be your wide receiver one. So I I want the volume. Yeah, I I guess vulnerability of drafting an, a powerful pass catching option. Keenan's probably more vulnerable to a change in his his total volume. Yeah, we'll see if the Harbaugh pass attempts of the past are the, the ones that we end up with. Really low volume. Well, Nico Collins came in at nine, just 24 years old, what consistency rank of 16. Stud. Did he really finish as the wide receiver nine on the season? You betcha. And that is with, what, one, two missed games? Two missed games, and he finished as the wide. That, I was unaware of this. I've, I've looked at all the uh, the the consistency and really, metrics, but I didn't look at like the just the total fantasy finishes. Really three, because he – in week 14 against the Jets. Yeah, he, he played, ba barely played. Played 5% of the snaps. 40% good, 27% great, 27% bust. Amazing at home, like double the production at home. Amazing against bad defenses. More than double the production against bottom 16 pass defenses. In fact, the biggest discrepancy in the true series history at wide receiver, Nico Collins got shut down by top 16 defenses and dominated bad ones. But I think that that's probably very indicative of where C.J. Stroud was sure, and what that strategy was going to be. But he was a monster. Top 10 all-time yards per route run number with a rookie quarterback. So the sky feels like the limit for a 24-year-old Nico Collins moving forward. We've had the Nico versus Tank Dell discussion, and I think, Mike, you said you kind of leaned the Nico way. And a little it's, bit. It's hard not to, ending the year the way that we did. I, him and Tank will probably be in like the exact same round. Would not be surprised. That sounds exactly right. Which round will that be? Three, four. Oh, they won't. They won't get to the fourth. They won't get to game. So three, third. I Both think so. of them. Both of them gone by then. I I think there's going to be a lot of debate about Nico versus Tank, and I'm not even sure which side I'm on. I I. There's time for that. Yeah, there's time for that. I mean, I I find myself leaning Nico solely because of size just weight and hopeful durability but it's not like he didn't miss games no he did and tank is tanks great 84 12 97 and 8 that was the numbers for nico so uh, you know a little mike evans ask in terms of the you know 80 80 receptions that's about where mike settles in 
And uh, we didn't get to see Tank Dell for five weeks, but Nico stepped right back in. Number one overall wide receiver in week 18, which didn't help your fantasy team, but it did help his fantasy finish. It's six top 12 finishes with zero finishes between wide receiver 13 and 25. All or nothing, baby. You are not allowed to scroll down in the dock, Mike, because I'm going to tell you the 10th receiver. Okay. His name is Stephon Dix. Okay. I haven't seen but, it yet. But I'm going to give you the numbers because they're just <laughs> spectacular. Now, what was the one you were surprised it at? Was, A.J. Brown's crazy A.J. Bad Brown splits. was 4 to 40. 4 to 40. Okay. Well, so, cause, oh, I'm going to paint the picture. Okay. Can I – Stephon Diggs over the first half, consistency rank. Go for it. Three? Two. Okay. Okay. Second best. Second best. <laughs> Unbelievably That's, good. Yeah, Wide two, receiver four it. off of the board, so you drafted yeah. him in the first round. And, and you you got what you drafted in Stephon Diggs over the first half. I dare you to get close on the second half. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, second I, most consistent I don't want to overguess and, and like ruin it, yeah. but. I'll well, would, would your guess be somewhere around 76? No, I would have gone in the 60s. <laughs> oh, man. 76? Second best to 76th best. That is <laughs> He had zero Man. bust games during the first half. And he had Yeah. Oh yeah, two for him. For sure. <laughs> oh, that sounds that, real bad. That's what he deserved. <laughs> it was like I just want you to pretend that you had a fantasy team that was doing well. And then you had this cool opportunity to swap a wide receiver spot out for like an IR spot because <laughs> it was like you just deleted. You just deleted a position, basically. You did worse than that. I mean, you were putting in a player. Like, if you were if you were to play straight up off the waiver wire every single week last year from week 10 on, you said, I have to play someone off the wire. I'm going to find what I think is the best option. More often than not, you would have outscored Stephon Diggs. When you look at that stretch from 10 to 18, yeah, in week 12, he had 16 fantasy points. And and we're gonna we're gonna include week eighteen, which you didn't need and wasn't that great with twelve. Aside from those two games, four point nine, four point seven, four point four, six point eight, five point four, five point one fantasy points. Wrecked your team. And he was so good the first half. And he's been so good for so many years. It didn't matter how many weeks he did it in a row. So what? What do you, you just do? kept? You had to put him in your lineup. What do you do with the fact that look, we we are fantasy players, we are stat analyzers, we love stuff like targets per route run and target share. Stephon Diggs had a twenty seven percent target share, twenty eight percent target per route run in that span. Yeah, with Joe Brady. So he was still a focal point, the focal point of the offense. It just didn't work. I am out. <laughs> I'm out. I, whatever his ADP is. You don't want to see that sweet Stefan Diggs name on your roster with the upside because I think he's going to be tantalizing people. It will be tantalizing. And it is, he is the one of the quintessential players where you just have to be okay being wrong. And you Wait, you let me could, hold on. Hold on. Let me, let me just reset you real quick. Okay. What if uh, I told you you had a 27% target share and yeah. a 28% target per route run? You want him now? Um, that, that almost makes me more upset because it feels like it's broken. Yeah, well, and they were winning games and, and they, and they just, you know, they, they took that OC and they said, Hey, you're full time now. You're not interim. So they got far with that. And I mean, maybe the season starts okay for Diggs. I'm sure he'll have his games assuming he's still a bill, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to, he, did he, he won't, hit the he won't cliff? Fall. He won't fall to like the fifth, sixth round. No, this he is, won't. He's still going to be a player that is probably drafted. Yeah, Kyle says from, right now for the uh, shout out to all the D Gens on Underdog already doing best ball drafts. Wide receiver, 15. Oh, yeah, I'm out. What if I told you the passer rating for Josh <laughs> Allen on deep targets to Spawn Diggs this year was 34? I would ask, what's the, what's the top end of the pass rating again? Not that. <laughs> And and it's hard not uh, to look at players. Jason. I mean, there were players like Julio Jones and AJ Green and DeAndre Hopkins and Devontae Adams that they hit a cliff, and then you go, ah, it's Julio, ah, it's AJ Green, ah, it's Hopkins. Well, guess what? You know, the, the truth is, 
It's over. <laughs> That's the. I mean, the truth is, is that DeAndre Hopkins can be as mad as he wants that no one wanted him. But you weren't that good. You certainly weren't. When I say that good, I I mean compared to what you were. Right. Yeah. Hopkins Diggs had will his be games. fine. Yes. For the Bills, but not Diggs. Again. He won't be Diggs. He will again. never be Stephon Diggs. I don't think. Top 10 fantasy Jason wide receiver. Is very confident. No, I'm very confident that he will never be a top 10 fantasy wide receiver. But he's again. so loud that the target share is always going to be there. But it was. <laughs> it was. Right. There. It was. I there. know. That's what I'm saying. It's going to be the hardest player next year. I mean, they have, they'll have a whole offseason to, to iron out the kinks of, yeah. the, of the Joe Brady system. Yeah. And then 27% target per round run. He's still guaranteed $40 million. They have to work him in. Well, and, the, and right now, I mean, they don't really have a lot of other I was gonna, options. I was Gabe, say, Davis Gabe Davis is, is not, not the... under contract, and who boy, Khalil Shakir, baby, yeah, Dalton, or Dalton Kincaid. Dalton Kincaid. I yes. mean, Dalton Kincaid will be the the biggest jump up in targets next year. So I, you're in. Yeah, I'm in. I sophomores. I, there you go. I'll be out on Brock Bowers too this year in redraft. Don't you worry. Especially when he goes to even the, even when the rookie Sam Laporta is like the best tight end in, in football. Sure, but in hindsight, no, no, that wasn't who people were banging the drum for. Like, oh, it was, yeah. it's got to be Sam it's Laporta. Fair. No, it was all Don Kikade. Sam Laporta was barely drafted. Like there was debate in the footies of whether he should have been a uh, a waiver wire gem or technically it was like his ADP was like round fifteen. If you could have made Jason the maddest possible this offseason, you would have taken Laporta to start. And then you would have gone like the Nico Collins Tank Dell <laughs> wide receiver combo yeah. and just depended on rookies. Didn't you? You're such an old school guy, man. Well, I love rookies. You know? I just... don't love wide receivers with rookie quarterbacks, and I don't love rookie tight ends. Okay. Okay. So it seems like you like some rookies. Doesn't seem like doesn't seem like you got big love. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, oh, that sounds had, like little. He Puka. sounds he's, like little love. He's very focused. Mm -hmm. I pour my love into great rookie wide receivers with good quarterbacks. <laughs> all right, we'll dig into the second part of the truth series on the wide receiver position on Tuesday. Thank you for joining us. You can check out the community ballersdiscord.com. Go chat it up over there. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.